Today, presenting, we have Nicole Raftery on her project for food waste study of James Madison University. Uh, her advisor is Dr. Freisinger. Please hold all questions to the end and give your undivided attention. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. I'm Nicole Raftery, and today I'm going to talk to you about food loss and waste disposal here at JMU. So as an ISAT major, I concentrated in the environment, well, the environment sector. And from that, I kind of developed this project, but the real origin came from when I started working at JMU's largest dining facility, the East Campus Dining Hall, or E-Hall. Upon a couple of my first shifts, I had to work in the dishwashing room. And after one shift, I'll never forget it, I called my mom right after I was so upset. I couldn't believe how much food waste there really was. Plate after plate full of food and everything, nothing, nothing was left out. Desserts, fruits, vegetables, meats, everything. Hundreds of pounds of food every single day going to composting as opposed to actually feeding people. Then I kind of started thinking about it on a larger scale. Well, this is just one dining hall. There's multiple on campus. And then there's retail facilities. And this is just one campus. What about all the other schools? So it really just, it got me going, it really did. And so it brought me to this project. But before I really dive into the details, I want to give you a, a general idea of food waste and disposal nationwide. So according to the Environmental Protection Agency, food waste is defined as food that is unfit for human consumption, like eggshells or um, bones of chicken. And then the term wasted food is defined as food that is fit for human consumption but instead gets disposed of, like leftovers at dinner getting thrown away. And then the term food loss is defined as food that is lost along the way from origin to its end. So a lot of times food travels a lot of distance to actually get sold in stores and sometimes it can get damaged or things can happen and it'll get rejected by a store and that would be food loss. For the sake of this presentation and my thesis paper, I use the terms interchangeably because there is no, um, in the data that I acquired, there's no distinction between which type of food waste is what. So it's all just going to be food waste, wasted food, food loss. So as of 2014, it was noticed that up to as much as 40% of all food sold in the United States is wasted. And of that food, approximately 31% of it comes from the consumer level. So where's all this food going? How do we dispose of it? Here I have a food recovery hierarchy that was developed by, or created by the EPA. And basically it has all the options for food waste disposal from most preferred to least preferred. We have source reduction. We have feeding the hungry or feeding animals. Industrial uses like biofuels. Composting and landfilling. Now according to recent data, we as a country tend to dispose of food using our least preferred options. In 2014, food waste took up 14.9% of all municipal solid waste that was generated, and that amounted to 38.4 million tons. Of that waste, 76% of it was landfilled, our least preferred option. 5% of it was composted and recycled, our second least preferred option. And the remaining 19% of it was used for industrial purposes. Again, one of the least preferred options. So there's this discrepancy between how we should waste and how we actually do waste. Here at JMU, we have three different ways of disposing. We have composting, landfill, and recycling. The JMU dining halls, the all you care to eat dining halls, that's all composted and that is done through Aramark. But at the retail facilities, which are more like to-go facilities, disposal is up to the consumer. But at every retail facility, there's composting bins, landfill bins, and, dispose, and um, recycling bins that have labels and they try to guide consumers to properly dispose of waste. So I really wanted to know more about how much waste JMU is producing. I couldn't get access to exactly how much waste we're producing, but I was able to get some composting numbers. In 2013, JMU started composting with Black Bear Composting. We don't, uh, we don't compost with them anymore because the facility itself is shutting down, but I was able to get the data that they acquired from us. From 2013 to 2016, JMU averaged 371 tons of food waste every year, or approximately 750,000 pounds. If you break it down by, on a student basis, with approximately 21,000 students here, it amounts to around 35 pounds of food loss or food waste per year per student. However, 
that number is most likely an underestimate because not every student has a dining plan. In fact, a lot don't. And therefore, this, this number is likely higher per student. So I wanted to know, why, why are we wasting so much food? Why are we disposing of it improperly? What's, what's going on? So I decided to create a survey, so a way to study the behavioral side of food waste here on campus. I was approved by the Institutional Review Board and my survey was conducted in March of this year. I had the goal of getting at least 300 responses, and I got 316. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I conducted it myself, it was in person, it was anonymous, and I used, I wanted to make sure that I got both sides of campus. I wanted to make sure that I got both times, lunch and dinner, and then I also wanted to make sure that I got results from dining facilities, all you care to eat, and then the retail facilities. In order to ensure random selection in each facility, I selected a certain collection of tables that if a person were to sit at those tables, they will be asked to participate. And then everyone else is excluded. Luckily, it went pretty well. Not too many people denied it. But um, anyway, so the layout of the survey started with the first question was, what's your relationship to JMU? A student, faculty, staff, visitor, and then if you're a student, the next three questions asked for your academic year, do you live on campus, and do you have a meal plan? Question five and its subset questions um, addressed retail, no, not retail. It addressed the all you care to eat facilities. And it asked, how frequently do you visit retail, those types of facilities? How much plate waste do you return on a typical day? And then factors that may influence you to waste food, and factors that influence you to not waste food. Question six and its subset questions, that's what address retail facilities. And that asks for frequency of visit, frequency of proper food disposal, and again, factors that influence proper disposal, factors that may influence improper disposal. Question seven asks the participants to say, express what might influence their habits on campus. What actions can JMU take to help guide them towards better waste habits. And then question eight just simply asked, do you think food waste is a problem? So of all the participants, I found that 97% were students, 66% of which were underclassmen, sophomore or younger, and the remaining were upperclassmen, junior year or higher. Um, so here I have the factors that contributed to wasting food. I found that 88% of all respondents said that they return typically a fourth of a plate of food or less when they go to the dining halls. And so what, what contributes to that? Why, why does that happen? I have a bunch of factors here that are listed, such as upbringing, social pressure, unawareness of impacts, time, the idea that your eyes are too big for your stomach, convenience, everyone else does it. And what I found was that the number one factor was eyes are too big for your stomach. The idea that you just simply think you can consume more than you can. And once you take it, you can't put it back, and you're technically not allowed to bring it home with you when you're in the dining facilities. So the only other option is to get rid of it, dispose of it. Second most influential factor was time. The idea that maybe you don't have enough time to consume all that you thought you could. Or you're just in a rush and you just have to get rid of it. The remaining factors didn't uh, influence as many participants, so for the sake of time, I'm just gonna move along. So again, I wanted to get both sides. Why would you waste? Why wouldn't you waste? An overwhelming majority found that upbringing is a part of the reason why they don't waste food. I personally, I, I go with that. My mom and dad wouldn't let me leave the table until I finished eating. There's usually greens on the plate left, but still. And then I found that 46% of respondents said that being aware of the social, economical, and environmental impacts of wasting food led them to not waste food. Only 27% said that financial uh, factors will influence them not to waste food, meaning they see wasting food as wasting money, which is very true. may not be the most moral reason to not waste food, but at least it's influencing them to do the right thing. And then only 11% said that social pressure force them to not waste food, as in, you know, people being like, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> so the next subset of questions addressed the retail dining facilities and proper disposal habits. 79% of all respondents said that they always or often 
properly dispose of waste. The remaining occasionally or less dispose of waste properly. So I wanted to figure out what factors contributed to this. Number one factor was being informed of what goes where. Just, just having to know the knowledge of what type of food goes in this or where does this go, that influenced them. And then the availability of bins. Like I said, the three bins, composting, landfill, and recycling, are in every single dining facility, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're in every single building on campus. The remaining factors didn't have as much of an influence, so again, for the sake of time, I'm just gonna keep moving forward. So I also wanted to figure out what would cause you to not dispose of waste properly. And the number one factor was unavailability of bins. So as I just mentioned, I, I don't think I've personally seen a composting bin anywhere but a dining facility, which is a shame because a lot of people will take food from the retail facilities and go to the library, they'll come to this building to do work, so it, it would be really beneficial if there were more bins. Uh, another factor that was close in second place was time. Having to sit there and sort out through your trash and figure out what goes where might influence people not to properly dispose. It might just be easier for the sake of time to just chuck it and go. Another close third factor was being uninformed of what goes where. If you don't know where it goes, you might just not care enough to figure it out and just get rid of it in one way or another. So from all of this, I wanted to find real ways that we could implement anything, measures, actions, whatever it takes to get people to really pay attention and to really influence how they, how they you know, produce waste and how they dispose of it. So I asked in the survey, what type of actions could JMU take that might influence you? And 62% said that dining hall reminders might help influence them. So some sort of visual aid to say, hey, don't waste food today. 52% said that awareness of impacts, having an understanding of why they shouldn't waste food might influence them not to. A 19% said that having some sort of an information session during frog week or first year orientation for the incoming students might help them. And then 8% said that residence hall programming, such as doing things with their RA and games and things like that might help. And then the 8% was other, and I allowed for people to write in whatever they thought might help. Few of those responses were better tasting food, uh, <laughs> um, incentives for students, and more bids. So uh, after this survey, after doing all the data, figuring out what could possibly really fit here with our community, our culture, I came up with a list of suggestions, but for this uh, time frame, I'm just gonna go over a few key ones that I think would really be beneficial. But I broke it down into three sections. Raising student awareness, redirecting unwanted food, and disposal bits. Raising student awareness. I personally think that doing an orientation session that has that talks about food waste, dining hall etiquette would be very beneficial. 19% said that they would want something like that, which isn't that much, but 52% said that they want to be aware of the impacts. So in these types of information sessions for the freshmen, they would learn and become aware of these impacts. And then this would carry with them all through college. So we would catch them right before they get here and be like, here we go, don't waste food. Another student awareness tactic could be um, <coughs> publicity. We have a paper here, The Breeze. That's a great way to spread the word. And then there's also the Jamie Potty Mouth, which I'm not entirely sure how to describe what that is, but it hangs on the bathroom stalls. <laughs> so it's a great way to just get some tips out there to talk about, you know what, food waste. Just a little tidbit. Hey, fact of the day. Up to 40% of food was wasted in 2014. Redirect unwanted food. Items that have close, like a lot of, uh, sorry, a lot of uh, retail facilities will take items that are close to the sell by date, use by date, because they don't like the idea of not looking like they have only the freshest food. So if this is the case, we could have clearance racks in the retail facilities. Anything that's not getting sold or anything that really is, is about to expire, whatever it may be, put it in a clearance rack because you know, poor college students, cheaper food, it's a win-win. Also, um, taste was a, a comment that a lot of people have made because the survey was on a piece of paper, some people made some side comments. Taste was on there a few times, and 
that to me could really easily be fixed by having samples. It may not work in the retail facilities, but in the JMU dining halls, the all-you-care-to-eat facilities, sampling could be a part of the procedure. So instead of having to take a full serving of something to figure out if you actually want it, you could just ask for a little piece of it, and then if you don't, move along. Another, uh, <clears throat> something that just started here at JMU is Campus Kitchen, Campus Kitchen at JMU. Uh, this is a nationwide project, but we just got it here, and I actually work for them this semester. And basically, we take food from JMU Catering, and we redirect it to the Salvation Army. So I propose that we get more than just from JMU, uh, JMU Catering. I want to combine you know, all dining services and campus kitchens so that we can get food waste from any retail facility on campus. This way, whatever food is not getting consumed can be sent and given to those who need it most. And then disposal bins. Plain and simple, they should, they, we just need more of them. They need to be in every building. Every student should have the opportunity to dispose of, of waste the way it should be disposed of. That and it seems that there's a lot of confusion as to what bins go where. Even though there are images on, uh, like above the trash cans, it seems that, that there's still some confusion. So maybe we can come up with a way to help make it a little more clear what belongs where. I thought of the idea of putting a definition on each bin. May, you may not know what composting is. Some people don't know what that is. So if you're like, I don't know if this is compostable, then you may not compost it. But if you were to know that composting is you know, converting organic material into something like fertilizer, you might say, oh, well, this is food. Food's organic. I can put it in the composting bin. So these are just suggestions that will work here for JMU. But upon doing this project, I really, you know, this really comes down to the individual and individual choices. So I also developed a list that would relate to individuals. There's a lot of different ways that one person can make a difference, and I have a whole bunch in my paper, but I'm just gonna give you a few big ones. Buy ugly produce. <laughs> when you go to grocery stores or anywhere, they usually pull stuff that doesn't look pretty. And so if you grab that ugly apple before they pull it, it'll probably still taste like an apple. Save it from a landfill. Uh, speak up, talk about it. This is a big problem, it's worldwide. And, if, and you know, we have seven, seven and a half billion people on the planet, 800 million of them. 800 million are malnourished, and yet we have 38.4 million tons of food getting wasted in 2014. Just doesn't doesn't add up. Also, using reusable bags for shopping and reusable mugs, things like that. Learning how to cook for one it took me a long time. If you cook too much food and you end up throwing it out, so learn how to cook for one or cook with a group, things like that. There's a lot of really small ways that we can make a difference. But all in all. Food waste is a worldwide problem. The only country as of today that is actually implementing federal regulation is France, and that's because of last year. As of 2016, France just passed a law that bans supermarkets from landfilling all their food waste. They have to, by law now, send their food waste to charity instead. And this is great, but we can't all rely on France to fix all of our problems. <laughs> So it has to come down to us, the individuals. What we do makes a difference. Here at JMU, we all have the option to do the things that we want to do whenever. But if we were just to take a second to think about what we do, we, we could help. We really could. Having dining hall reminders to say, hey, don't waste today. Things like that, it could really, really make a difference. Any questions? <laughs> it seems the uh, one of one of the factors is the you know, I should for the stomach uh, is is always seen a contradiction for me because you're, you're in a in a all you care to eat facility you can go back as many times as you want mm -hmm. so um, there there is, there may be a laziness issue if I take more than I want then I don't have to make that trip or there may be some social impediment are are, are people afraid of the servers or whatever because many times there are servers there but. It seems like that decision point for at least that factor is at at the serving rail, mm -hmm. uh, and that may be. Is there any kind of reminder there at those rails, saying, "Hey, you, you can come back. Please don't take more than you can eat." From my experience in E Hall, E Hall 
sell, it's um, they serve it to you and then D-Hub is self-serve. They said that the best that they can do is only serve one serving and if people on request ask for more they can but a lot of um, e-haul workers will try to be like oh you can only have one but you can always come back. Unfortunately, if you're right, it comes down to their personal choice right in the moment. Um, something that Aramark did to kind of combat that was get it was becoming tradeless. And that has happened at multiple campuses and they saw I believe it was a twenty it was twenty to twenty five percent reduction in food waste just by getting rid of trays, the concept of piling up your food. But I did read about a study of a school in South Africa where they said that people really didn't like the idea of not having multiple plates because they had to get up again and again and again and then if there's lines and things like that. So as far as that goes I wish I, could, I wish I had an answer. I'm not sure. I, I think maybe even at each little station, just have, you know, you can always come back for more. You know, something, some sort of, again, the, the reminders, the visual aids, you know. JNU Dining Services could work with the School of Media, Art, and Design to come up with a way that will make it fun and interesting, but also very informative to the students. Yeah? So, at like eHealth, for example, a lot of the food that gets wasted is food that is like on your plate and you don't finish eating it. And like how much do you know how much uh, food is wasted that's just left over at the end of the day? Like oh, so there's um, back of house food waste and front of house food waste. Front of house is what you just mentioned, the consumer side. Back of house is um, on e haul. As far as I know, I don't know specifically the numbers, but from working there and I spoke with um, a couple of the managers that do, they have a lot of very, um, very professional, very qualitative and quantitative ways to reduce their food waste. They weigh everything at the end of the day, but the majority of their waste actually comes from food scraps. They try very hard to make sure they only put out what they think will be used, and then whatever is not, they keep in storage and they, they repurpose it in other ways. Uh, so you mentioned about 371 tons of food waste. That's for the whole JMU? Yes. And that is for only for the organic part? Yeah, just the, just the composted waste. So that includes the waste that comes from the JMU dining facilities and the composting bins that you can find in the retail facilities. Okay, then for other kind of uh, containers that are going to recycle or landfill, uh, what kind of items will be the, going to the landfill? I'm sorry, say that again? So what kind of items are in the, in the waste uh, will, will be going to the landfill? Uh, things like potato chip bags, um, certain types of plastics I mean, that can't be recycled. Um, oh, uh, that's a good question. Now I feel like there's more recycling and composting options than there are landfill, but actually something that um, J Airmark just did was, I don't know if any of you noticed on campus, I don't know if you've been here long enough, but originally it was composting, composting, recycling landfill nearest to the door, but they reversed it because they noticed a lot of people were throwing landfill type trash into the composting bins. So now it's kind of preferred where it's rather, you'd rather throw compostable material in the landfill bin rather than landfill and composting in order to not contaminate it. But yeah, potato chip bags, um, that's all I got. <laughs> potato chip bags. Yes? Um, what, when, what happens like, with the compost when um, would things that aren't supposed to be composted, like potato chip bags, end up in those bins? Because, like, I mean, like, I mean, you know, like all the reasons you just mentioned, like time, not knowing. Mm -hmm. Like some people just, you know, throw things in the compost bin, thinking, oh, this is the better option mm -hmm. than just throwing out a landfill, mm -hmm. but it's just not compostable. Is it like it's scrubbing up? Is it well, down? there's a certain amount. So for black bear composting, they had a zero contamination rule. And they told me that JMU was pretty good and that we'd only return about 1% of our waste that <coughs> wouldn't be landfilled. But they informed me that that's because JMU workers, dining hall workers, they will go through the composting bins and pull out anything that's landfilled. So we're privileged here in the sense that if we make that mistake, somebody will fix it for us, but that's not the case everywhere. Any other questions? Yeah, I think that samples idea is Awesome idea, and I'm just wondering if you came up with that, or did you just hear about other universities? I'd love to personally take <laughs> take that one, but no, I uh, I read about that. I believe it was at the University of Austin, Texas. I believe they uh, they have sampling now because the students were complaining that they didn't get the option and then they were wasting food. So that's a great idea. Yeah, hopefully I didn't just go on camera saying the wrong school. <laughs> Any other questions? Um, Should have done that. No? Thank you so much.